Let's take a look at how to execute test cases in Zephyr Teams and Zephyr Enterprise. Within the test case execution application, all of your cycles and phases from the test planning application are presented here as folders. You have my executions, which show the test cases assigned to a particular tester, the person logged in, as well as those assigned to anyone, since every member of the team will be able to access those test cases. There's also an area called All Executions, which is where you can see assignments made specifically to other individuals so that you can keep a track of the test cases done by others. So within My Executions, if you go to a cycle and then go to a phase, you'll see the test cases. You can select a test case from here. You can start going through the steps and updating the status respectively with pass, fail, work in progress or any other custom status. So as we execute this test case, if we encounter an issue and therefore update the overall test case to be a fail, we can add in some step details here for the actual test results. And of course, as part of this comment here, we can add in attachments we can, at this stage, also raise defects. If we click on the D button, we can find a JIRA defect by using a defect ID, use a JQL query, or indeed a filter that we've created and shared from within JIRA, which is available for us to see over here. So if we hit search over here, it'll show the bugs found by this filter, and we can either link or add as a subtask to one of these bugs. Alternatively, you can create a brand new defect. So given the configuration within the administration application for this project, Project Ironclad, it's already been aligned with the Jira Project Ironclad, so that's already selected. We can override that and select a different project as well. But we do want to raise a bug. Now all of your system fields and custom fields are automatically shown here. You do not need to map them or set any data types or field lengths they are automatically presented to you over here now we'll want to co copy the steps to reproduce this can be in plain text it can also be as wiki markup as well i'll add in both just to show you how they both look so the steps to reproduce are embedded here with test step test data expected results and any notes as well for any issues Okay. Now, since none of these other fields here are mandatory, I can go ahead and create. This files the defect within Jira and comes back with an ID. Now, although these steps to reproduce are in here, if any attachments need to be included as part of this defect, you can drag and drop them into this panel below. So you'll see here IR152 has been created. If I click on this ID right now, it takes me over to the defect tracking application, which is where we can see details of the bug and we can update its status. We can change any of the fields. We can open out the form that we originally used for creating this bug by using edit. If I click on the ID, it'll take me into Jira and then I'll see the plain text as well as the wiki markup as well. Below we can see the actual test case that was executed, including details of the project, the release, the sprint, the phase and the subfolder the execution was part of. If this test case is linked to a Jira requirement within Zephyr Enterprise or Zephyr Teams, the requirement details will be shown here as an issue link as well. So for instance, if this test case was linked to a story, the story link would be shown here too. So back to the test case execution application, that covers the manual test case execution flow. For any test cases denoted with an A, if there are multiple here, we can multi-select them. In this case, there's only the one. You select them, and then you use the E button to execute. So we see here there's a uh, execution path. We select a machine that the test case needs to run on. 
we set an interim status like work in progress automation if we've selected multiple scripts these scripts can run sequentially or in parallel and then we hit run this script will then be executed and the results will be passed back here and uh, inevitably this status will be updated as either a pass or fail depending on the return result of zero or one so Zephyr Teams and Zephyr Enterprise also comes with an exploratory testing add-on, an extension via Chrome. If you click on the extension, you can create either a manual set of screenshots or an automated one every five seconds. They'll be added to a image library and you can select from them. You can then edit the image, add in labels, add in some text, and then you can select a project and add the image that you've created to a defect within Jira or test case execution within Zephyr. All of your images are shown here on the right hand side. These are part of your browser's memory, so they'll always be over here. And of course, you can dispose of them once you're done as well. From an automation perspective, when a vortex run is conducted or when the folder watcher is used, test case stubs are automatically created within the test repository application placed within the test planning application for the run and the results are published into the test execution application too 